Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am your channel host. Before we get started, drop a like on this video and subscribe if you are new here. Let's begin. My ex-friend ruined my friendship of like 4 or 5 years. We started hanging out when we were about 5 years old. The ending of our friendship happened when I was maybe around 9 or 10 and it was in one single night for absolutely no reason other than him being a creep and jackass. So for the most part the sleepover was typical, movie, video games and then popcorn. It was a pretty standard stuff, well according to sleepovers and how they went. Eventually it comes time to go to bed, I go into the bathroom and change into my pyjama pants, then I walk back in and he's already in his bed and smirking. I don't really think much of it. So I walk over and get into my sleeping bag, which was one he had let me borrow. He asked me if he wanted to play some video games some more before we went to bed. This is where things started to get real weird. He throws open the blanket and it turns out the guy is literally naked. The kid basically just flashed me, what on earth was going on? Understandably I'm stunned. I say something along the lines of, what the hell is wrong with you? put some clothes on, and then he goes, no, this is my house, my rules. So I'm really uncomfortable now, and I really don't want to sleep after what he's just done. Eventually he covers himself back up with his blanket, and says he'll put some clothes back on, which he does. He gets really annoyed at me because of my response, but at this time he was my best friend, and longest friend I'd ever had in my life. So it was really a flood of mixture of emotions, I had no idea what to do. I try my hardest to shrug it off and we play some more video games for a little while. Then we turn the lights off and go to sleep and that's where it gets even worse. Not too long after the lights go out, I hear him rustling around then getting out of his bed. He turns to me, stood up in front of me saying, I'm naked again and does an awful creepy chuckle beside my bed. It's so weird and I don't know what to say or do at this point. I was felt like I was in a hostage situation where I was just in a creepy bedroom with this guy who was supposed to be my best friend but was now being taken over by a demon. Basically a brief back and forth goes on and at this point I'm pretty much yelling at him to leave me alone so I can go to sleep. I hear him stand up, okay good, he's going to leave me alone right now. Is he? Well, that was what I thought. However, he continued to walk about the room that night completely naked, as if we were both three-year-olds and had no conscience whatsoever. I guess he was trying his chances and had reached that age where he figured that it was, well, a normal thing to try and do. I only ever saw him as a friend and especially at that age had no feelings or whatever for him or any guy for that matter. But the issue with me remained the fact that this guy was clearly trying his best to get in with me in his own house in a situation where I feel trapped up against the wall. Eventually I wake up around 2 hours later. I start to feel something splattering against my sleeping bag where my feet were. It didn't take me long to figure it out. The dude was peeing on me. I told him I was going home as I'm trying to get out of my sleeping bag in a panic but before I can get out of the way, he body slams me. I was a pretty strong kid so it didn't hurt that bad and he was quite light. I was more stunned of what he had just done, but boy after that I just didn't care anymore. I was seeing red, he stood up to body slam me again, just as I got my legs out from the sleeping bag and as he goes to jump on me I kick him and get him to leave me alone. He starts gasping and crying after I kicked him in the chest. This is the point where I woke his mum up. It must have been about 11.30 or maybe midnight at this point and I told her what had happened. She goes into the room to find her naked son on the floor crying, basically yells at me to leave immediately. I collect my stuff, roll up the sleeping bag and immediately leave. I remember calling my mum as I was rolling up all my stuff and getting it all packed away in my bag. During this time he was crying and his mum was literally stood there in disbelief. She couldn't quite believe what I had just told her but there was evidence of everything that had happened with half of the pee all over the floor and me literally shaking with trauma. 
After all this, he ruined our friendship completely, and after this day, I never saw him again. I only occasionally saw him at high school, and I remember that as we grew older, and I kept seeing him sometimes in the class corridor, it would be super awkward. If he ever caught eye contact with me, he would look down, go bright red, and try everything to ignore me. I guess he regrets it deep down, but that is something that you simply cannot justify or avoid. It was traumatic, and he did what he did, and I guess he ruined our friendship forever. I had a sleepover birthday party when I turned 9. It was a huge deal for me. I was so excited and prepped for it for ages. Around 7 other girls came over, and we had candy and a treasure hunt and all the fun things you do when you're young. An old friend of my dad's was staying at our house that night and brought me a big box of chocolates as a birthday gift. We ate a few and then started playing games outside, leaving the open box unattended in the dining room. My two large dogs ate the entire box. By the time this was discovered, my dad and his friend had left to grab a beer together leaving my mum alone with eight girls and a toddler, as well as two extremely ill dogs. She couldn't load us all into the car to take the dogs to the emergency vet, so I had to help her pour hydrogen peroxide down their throats to make them puke. The rest of the night was punctuated by the sound of the dogs throwing up in the backyard. Several girls asked to call their parents and go home, because it just turned into a nightmare at this point. As a last note, our new fee, the most stubborn, stupid and yet wonderful dog we ever owned, never puked once, yet was completely fine. The Malamut, who we assume was the ringleader, paid heavily for her crimes. She was also fine in the end, but ended up living to 16 years old. So, never ever leave chocolates on the floor, especially if you have dogs. My friend's mum had complained about people flushing the toilet in the middle of the night. It was a small house and I was little, so I thought, okay, just don't flush in the middle of the night, simple. But on different occasions, she complained about kids not flushing the toilet. Okay, don't go to the bathroom when everyone is asleep. Check, neither of these things she said directly to me. I just heard them and didn't want to upset her because even though I liked my friend a lot, his mum was terrifying to me. She screamed at the kids and stuff like just went crazy at them. I'm sure you can see where this is going. One night, I was sleeping over. After a latest night of playing video games, probably around 9 as we were young and had a bedtime back then, I tucked into bed no problem. It takes me a while to fall asleep, especially at other people's houses. After about an hour and the kids have all fallen asleep, I realised that I need to take a number 2. I consider going to the bathroom, but I don't want to disturb anyone's sleep and get scalded with flushing the toilet. I try to ignore it and attempt to fall asleep to no avail. Then, I consider going to the toilet and just not flushing it and hoping that no one knows it was me. But the mum might be awake and hear the door. I'll wait a little longer, so I decide to wait. It must be midnight by this point. Surely this is the right time. I heard some footsteps over by the bathroom, so I waited. This went on all night long. I scared myself into holding in an enormous one for the entire night until the morning at around 6am. Dropping that after the insomnia hell induced was both divine and yet harrowing. I never told anyone about this, I just held it in all night and I guess people assumed that I woke up early and was tired from that later day. I was sat in my room one evening playing some games. I remember my mum walked in and told me that I was going for a sleepover with my friend. I was a bit confused but there was no complaining here as I loved it. Sleepovers were one of my favourite things and I remember the adrenaline rush and the excitement you'd feel by doing it. It felt so fun, adventurous and rebellious. But deep down I was a bit confused, why was my mum taking me to have a sleepover when I hadn't even asked? Well it turns out that my auntie had fallen ill and was taken into hospital. She lived alone because my uncle had passed away many years ago. 
So my mom had to go in to take care of her and then bring her home at one point early in the morning so she could stay with her for the night. I was going around my friend's house. My friend John was such a lad. Well, or as they say nowadays. Back then obviously I didn't call him the lad, but he was my best friend. I got in with him so well. We were on the sports team together and we were just clicking all the time. On top of this, we had the same interests, so we would never go a dull moment together. Whether it be gaming, playing sports or whatever, we got on real well. We've been friends since the age of about six and are still friends to this day in our late teens. So there I was being taken to my friend's house unexpectedly almost like Christmas had come early. It was a new treat that I had just been well exposed to and I wasn't even ready for it. Apparently though John was and he had been told about this as my mum had rang John's mum the night before saying what was going to happen if I could please stay over. So it turns out I could. She dropped me off and I made myself welcome. We began by watching a film and eating some popcorn because at this point it was already fairly late. It was about 8.30 to 9pm and we were getting ready for bed. Well, I say bed. When his mum puts us to bed we would stay up for another 2 or 3 hours under the covers and we'd either have our Game Boys or some things running. It would basically be a night of no sleep and just messing about and having fun. Sometimes we'd even wait for his parents to go to sleep and then run about the house. So that's what happened. Eventually the movie gets done, I can't remember which one it is. We eat all the popcorn until our bellies are bloated and we feel sick and then eventually his mum comes in and turns the TV off and tells us to get to sleep. I was sleeping below his bed on, I don't know how to describe it, but it was like a blow up mattress. I had that as well as a sleeping bag and a pillow that I had brought from my bed at my house. She turned the lights off, said goodnight and shut the door completely. So there we were, having a great time, just enjoying the fact that we were now together and once again enjoying ourselves. At the end of the day, little did we know what was about to happen. So with only about one hour sleep under our belts, we finally wake up the next morning. Another great thing about staying around John's house for sleepovers was the fact that his mum was so good at cooking breakfast. The fry ups she did there were insane, out of this world. For some reason I just remembered them being so good that even after a night of whole or no sleep whatsoever, we would end up just enjoying ourselves so much and literally scoffing everything we could. After all this, we figured we had a whole day ahead of us. My mum didn't plan on picking me up until later that day in the evening, so we just had to keep ourselves occupied, which by no means was an issue whatsoever. The weather was pretty good out, it was in the middle of fall, it was rather cold, but it was a clear and sunny day. It wasn't wet at all and there'd been no rain for weeks at this point. We decide to go outside. John has a big yard with a lot of land. We play football in it or as some of you call soccer and then we end up just enjoying ourselves whether it's on the bikes or going round having fun. After this, one time we went out after the breakfast had been finished and I remember John has this ramp leading up to one of his back doors. His family built this because his nan used to come and visit and she needed a wheelchair Basically, they made it so that she could enter the house easily and be pushed up the ramp. Connected to the ramp was this handle. It was basically like the metal railing that was around 3 or 4 foot off the ground. John liked basically spinning around on this, kind of like a monkey would, and he would go up and down, doing front flips and back flips while holding on by his hands and putting his feet on top of his hands. It was pretty cool to watch. He tried to teach me but I never actually tried it. I remember being outside, I'd just gone in to get a drink that his mum had given me and I saw him outside doing it. All of a sudden, just like that, I went to go and grab one of the bikes to pick it up and go on it and out of nowhere I hear John start to scream like crazy. These were absolute bellows from the bottom of his lungs, screams that I'd never heard anyone my age actually give out and as I turn around, he was on the floor holding his head. I run over wondering what's happened as John never would play pranks on me or mess about and pretend he was hurt. I'd never seen him cry in the whole of our friendship or scream for that matter at all. As I go over, it's like a nightmare. All of a sudden, I'm hit with so many emotions when I look at this guy, my friend, who's literally holding his head with blood pouring out of it. It turns out that John 
had mistimed one of the swings and not tucked his head in close enough to his waist. While going down, he sliced his head on one of the bricks that was there to hold the railing up on the side of this ramp. So there I was, sprinting in to find his mum and let her know what happened. In the meantime he was there with his blood now collecting in a pool at the side on the grass. His cries became quieter and quieter as it seemed like he was actually losing consciousness. His mum was panicking like crazy but managed to stay calm enough to grab the phone and immediately dial 911 after his dad came out and started applying pressure on the wound with some kind of a cloth. Everyone was freaking out at this point and it seemed like John was actually going unconscious and continually passing out and then regaining consciousness. I remember just standing there feeling so helpless, not being able to help with anything, just feeling like I was witnessing my own best friend die in front of me. I genuinely thought he was going to die because never had I ever seen adults panic like that so bad either. I know they were trying to stay as calm as they could, but this was their kid, and it was pretty bad. I don't know how big the scar was, but after all this happened, he ended up getting saved. His dad applied enough pressure to stop the bleeding, and although he lost a lot of blood, he was able to have something like 30 stitches to stitch up the scar and the slice in his head. After this, he still shows me this scar as he still has it to this day. It's something we remember over and over, and always bring up the same story. Sometimes I still have nightmares about that day and what happened to him. I can't quite believe how bad I felt watching him almost bleed out. To say that was a traumatic experience would be undershooting what it really was and what it felt like. When I was younger, my parents rarely ever let me have friends over for sleepovers. It was pretty annoying and sad at the same time. I don't know what it was, whether they were just embarrassed about the house, or perhaps they just didn't like the idea of having someone else's kids sleep over, and having the responsibility of basically looking after them for a night. It wasn't like we lived in an awfully bad house, or that my parents were bad at taking responsibility. I felt like we didn't lack in either of those areas, but obviously they did. There was this one time where they actually did allow one of my close friends to stay around. It was kind of cool, and when I say my close friend, we got up to all kinds of bad things. At one point he even got expelled from school. I can't remember what it was for because I became friends with him after that, but my mum didn't actually know about this. She just thought he was just another average good child that basically got good grades and did stuff like me. You see, I never messed about. Younger, I was always just chilling, trying to get my way through school. I got pretty decent grades and I was never really in trouble, but all I was really interested in was the sports. I was a huge basketball fan and I used to play all the time on the school team. It was pretty fun and it was the only reason I really went to school. My parents would always try and bribe me into getting good grades and studying and doing homework by buying me new shoes and things to do with basketball basically. So that's basically the intro to this story. My friend ended up coming round, I think it must have been in the afternoon. This was on a Friday night just after school had finished. We basically went home separately for about an hour or two and then his mum came and dropped him off at my house. I remember we spent the afternoon just chilling out and gaming and stuff and I just felt pretty cool the fact that I finally was allowed to have someone round for a sleepover. I can't remember exactly how old I was at this time. It was probably around 11 to 12, but I had never sleepover up until this point in my entire life at my house that was. I'd gone to stay at other people's houses, but I just thought it would be 10 times cooler to have it at my house this time. I just liked the idea. As the night was nearing its end, my friend's deviant side came out. He came up with the idea that when everyone had gone to sleep, including my sister and my two parents, we would creep out of my window and go and explore the town at night. Where we lived, they turned all the street lights off exactly at around 11pm. I don't know whether it was to save energy or for whatever reason, but it basically turned the place into some really creepy ghost town. I figured this out when I was around 11 and I was super ill with food poisoning. I was so ill that I couldn't sleep, and I remember looking out the window and seeing that it was weirdly dark. Then I figured that all the street lights were off. Eventually it clicked and I realised this was basically a routine for the street lights that they had been programmed on. 
So I was super creeped out and I explained this to my friend saying that we would have to take lights and if we were caught we would be in big trouble. My parents were strict but they were even more strict when we did anything that was seriously bad. If they caught me leaving the house at night at around gone midnight with my friend they would be not only worried but they'd probably make him go home and call his parents immediately. This could possibly ruin our friendship and reveal who he truly was to my parents. I knew this was make or break but I really liked the idea of doing it. It seemed so fun and also enticing at the same time. My friend was certain and that whole evening was trying to convince me over and over again about what we could do. There was a church around a mile away from our house. It was around three blocks away and if we could make it to there he said it would be cool to maybe look in through the windows and kind of creepy at the same time. Bear in mind we were both 11 at this point and maybe no more than about 5 foot 4 each. We were of a similar height and at the time he was definitely just about the most craziest guy I knew at school to say the least. I was no wimp though and I decided to go along with him. Eventually we lay in bed waiting to hear when my parents would go to sleep. We figured it would be a good idea to wait until they had gone to sleep for certain before we get out the window. So there we lay waiting. Now my parents tend to go to bed at different times. My mum goes to bed at around 11 and my dad used to stay up till maybe about 1 or sometimes even 1 to 2.30. This is what I tried to explain to my friend saying that sometimes he just stays up way too late and it would make it near impossible. The reason being is because the bungalow was built in a way that if we were to run frontwards onto the road, he could possibly see us, as the living room where the TV and computer was, was basically facing the drive. So I know it was unlikely that he would probably have the blinds shut or the curtains drawn, but there was always that chance that he could see us with the flashlight as we ran past, at 1am creeping about. We took our chances though and I think it was around quarter to one. We kept checking the time and trying to listen out to see if we could hear them awake. At one point I even woke up pretending to go to the toilet. As I opened the door and crept through into the hallway I realised that everyone was asleep. There was not a single light left on in the house and there was no noise coming from the TV or the computer. So, I didn't need the toilet obviously, I turned right around and went straight back into the room, skipping like some excited bunny. I realised that we could now pull it off, the window was big enough for us both to get through, and we weren't going to go to the hassle of trying to unlock the front door. Number one, it made a hell of a noise when you opened it because it was one of those real old ones that creaked, and on top of that, it kind of meant we'd be leaving the whole house open. I mean I didn't figure it out at the time but so did opening the window, but we weren't the smartest if you get me. After all this I told my friend the path was clear, we were now ready to go. He had one of those allen keys and pen knives where he had that kind of pocket accessory where he had a lot of different gadgets connected to it. I forget the name but basically he had a torch, one of those mini ones attached to it. He turned that on and we made our way through the window, climbing and squeezing ourselves through. It wasn't exactly easy to get out and was fairly tight fit just to get through the window. We propped it too with the lever still open, hoping that no one would tell or find out. I guess no one heard us leave as everything was going well up until one point. So we were on foot walking through a pitch black neighbourhood. There was something so relaxing about it and peaceful and we'd never done this before or at least I hadn't. I've had the idea that my friend may have already done it once or twice. There we were, following the light of his flashlight and walking down in the middle of the road. Firstly, he came up with the idea of going to the church, like he mentioned earlier. So we made our way to this church. The whole way we were freaking out big time. It was fun by no means, but I guess it was also scary at the same time. As we made it to the church, we remember that we weren't tall enough to look through the windows, so we would take turns holding each other up by the hands. Basically put your foot in their hand and hold them up so that they could then hold onto the window frame and peek through. It was super eerie because the local church near us left candles on during the night. I couldn't understand why, maybe it was just standard practice. I never went to church my whole life and I just figured it was super scary and creepy. The whole time we thought maybe some pastor or priest was going to jump out and scare us. 
Or perhaps we would see some secret cult inside of the church at 2 o'clock in the morning. After around half an hour peeking through each window, with both having extremely tired and aching hands of holding each other up to and from, we realised we would now go into the town a bit more. In the town where I lived there was a shop, a restaurant and a butcher's, then there was a whole bunch of other off licence shops but I never went there so I didn't really know what they were. There was like this building part where you could do some awesome jumps and stuff. A lot of the kids used to do that back in the late 90s, where you would basically do what was called free running or parkour. It was something that was extremely popular back in the day, especially before the huge boom of video games and social media. So my friend decided it would be a good idea that at 3 o'clock in the morning we now try out some free running or parkour in the pitch black. At this point his light was now starting to die as it was one of those mini ones with barely any battery life left in it. We'd had it on now for about a good hour or so, so it made sense that it was slowly dying. However, it wasn't good for us, as we would now have to make our way back without any lights. At this point though, that was the last of our concerns. We were now trying our best to just enjoy the rest of the night, hoping that our parents hadn't somehow found out and weren't aggressively looking out for us while driving around the town. We began doing some jumps from benches and then up onto the roofs. At one point we came up to a wall that was about 4 to 5 foot high, so maybe the same height as us or just a bit taller, I can't quite remember. There was a gate attached to it and the gate led through to the back end of a restaurant. This was the restaurant I had been to, it was a Chinese one and it was really good, I remember the food being pretty decent. Out the back where the gate was, was where they kept all of the bins that they'd throw away all the food and the rubbish from the place I guess. As we were trying to jump up and basically pull ourselves up onto this wall next to the gate, my friend decided to go first. He successfully got it first time. As I looked from the corner of my eye, something to the right of me caught my attention. It was moving and it was coming right from the floor. It turned out this whole time there was a homeless guy sleeping in a sleeping bag where we had been leaping up onto a wall. The bit I couldn't understand is how on earth hadn't we woke him up. My friend talks extremely loudly and we were jumping up onto a wall making all kinds of banging and clanging noises with our shoes. He was still sleeping though and only shuffling every once in a while and it was only once he started shuffling that I soon realised. My friend continued to jump about as I stood there dead still trying to get his attention with the least amount of noise and movement possible. Eventually it clicks and he realises. I get his attention and he shuts up and stops moving while sat on top of the wall. I point in the direction of this homeless guy that was just lying on the brick floor. He had a sleeping bag and what looked like nothing underneath. Immediately after this we got so freaked out even my friend who was a so called daredevil. We thought at any second this guy could literally just kill us or molest us and we didn't think anything of it, within a split second we were running home immediately. I reckon us running home may have waked him up but that guy literally slept through us making so much noise. It was either that or he was pretending to be asleep and planning his next move or just went back to sleep and didn't care that we were there. After this I remember running home, it was so dark and my friend's light was working on and off so basically was no help whatsoever. When we got home the window was still open and my parents weren't awake, so the good thing was we hadn't woke them up. We climbed back in through the window and locked it by the lever from the inside. We took our shoes off and our clothes and then ended up going straight back to sleep. It was one of the scariest moments of my life but at the same time one of the most fun. I loved every second of it and the fact that we never got caught made it even better. But that was one hell of a close call and I feel bad for that guy at the same time. My cousin and I were best friends growing up. She was months older than me, around 6. And we were always together. It was a pretty tight knit friendship. When she visited my other best friend, who lived down the road, we would play with us together. We were a grand trio. My cousin was having a birthday sleepover. She had told me she was inviting her own friends from school who I didn't know. She even invited my best friend who lived close by as well. 
This was my first time at an all girls sleepover. I was really excited, I must have been around 9 or 11 years old at the time. When we arrived her friends were extremely cold to me. When we joined them in the bedroom they laughed at us and didn't speak to us for most of the evening. Not only were they cold to me but also my friend who had joined us. These girls went to a mixed boys and girls school so the group spent most of the time talking about boys and all the things they had done. They took great delight in belittling and making fun of my friend and I as we went to an all girls school so we had no experience or interest at that age. They continually alienated us from conversation and would laugh with each other whenever my friend and I would try to join in. This was my first experience feeling so isolated in a room full of people. I felt extremely uncomfortable and yet I couldn't pin it on why. During the night the girls got even nastier. They prank called people and the girls would feed each other stupid things to say. I think I offered a quip and the girls screamed in my face to shut up and slammed the phone down and stormed out of the room. Her friends rallied around her and asked me why I had to ruin the game. I was the only one singled out. There was a constant battery of absolutely nasty comments, exclusion and humiliation. I had had enough and I said I would sleep elsewhere. I moved my sleeping bag into another room. My cousin begged me to rejoin as she didn't want me to get in trouble with my parents or her parents find out that I was basically being bullied at this point. I returned and I s just felt like the smallest person in the world. Thankfully the morning came and I was only dying to get packed up for my mum to come and collect me. My friend was still sleeping and had a blanket over her. Two of the girls took the bottom of her blanket and tried to tug it off her but she had the top of the blanket held tightly in her hands. She held onto it as the girls tried to rip it off her and there was a few seconds of struggling. The girls were just laughing and absolutely loving it. Even though they had literally woken my friend up in the middle of a sleep and she was petrified. One of the girls eventually lost their grip and kind of stumbled letting it go on one edge. She fell over her and immediately started blaming it on my friend for the reason that she fell over. We were so in shock leaving. I had never been treated like this and neither had my friend. We were way too young to understand the complexities of it all. I remember in the car on the way home, we agreed that the friends were not nice at all. When I got home, my mum asked me how the night went and I just broke down and sobbed my little heart out. I was just so confused why I'd be singled out and my cousin never once stood up for me. I just felt betrayed. I'm now 31 and I'm still extremely intimidated by large groups of women on first meeting because of this. I don't know if it's some kind of a psychological thing but I never met those girls ever again. I still see my cousin regularly and get on with her very well but those girls were something else. So I was an 11 year old and I was pretty quiet. I did not yet come into my own so my social skills were a bit weak and I was overly shy with people that I didn't know. This led me to only really make one or two friends during my first year at the comprehensive high school I was at. One of these friends happened to have the same name as me so we bonded pretty quickly due to teachers mixing us both up a lot. Anyway. We were becoming good friends as the months went by. He invited me for a sleepover a few months later and I agreed. I went over his place and we wandered around his town, got some snacks, bumped into a couple of other kids from our class, it was cool. Back at his place in the night, he declared that we were going to play a game of truth or dare. I mean I'm 11 and a pretty innocent sheltered kid so to me that was an innocent game like playing tag. I agreed. The rules were simple, here are 6 pieces of paper each, write 3 dares and 3 truth questions, scrunch them up and chuck them in a jar, we'd then take turns to pull them out and answer to them. Sounds fun I guess. I pull out the first piece, it's one of my own that I wrote and it reads, who do you fancy in our year? It was mild, look I was an innocent kid so this was the pinnacle of my gossip imagination. I told him and that was his turn. 
He pulls out a piece of paper, rolls his eyes, and says to me, I knew that I would get this one. He drops the paper down so I can read it. It's one of his own. It reads, shove a pen up your behind. Basically, I said it in nicer words, but you get the gist. Time stood still for that moment. I didn't have a clue how to process what he had just said. Of all the possibilities, he chose shoving a pen up someone's behind as one of these dares at the age of 11. I was still processing the paper with a little frown and a tilt on my innocent head. When I was about to have some brand new information to process, before I could react, he stood up, grabbed the pen we had used to write the dares, bent forward and proceeded to do the deed. He pulled a nice little face as he did it, but it just went straight in. We held some pretty awkward eye contact, him in a state of complete discomfort and confusion, but I just didn't understand what on earth I was witnessing. He then looked at the pen and it was missing the lid. I was absolutely mortified at this point, but he just rolls his eyes again, slipping the pen back up there and rummaging around until it made a click. To say I was mortified would be an understatement. I couldn't quite believe what was going on here. I was confused but also in a state of complete discomfort as I thought this guy was my best friend with the same name as me in the same classes. Turns out he was absolutely insane. He then walked over with this pen, opened his window and threw it off into the yard as if he had done this many many times with other sets of pens and enjoyed it. He then sat back down and said, your turn. To this day, I still never talk to him. I cut ties with him completely, and I have no idea what on earth led him to do things like that. I know we were young, and I guess at the time, you're exploring different things, but man, that was so weird. What on earth was he thinking? I don't really know if this is classed as a sleepover, but basically, I got an Airbnb with my friend. At the time we were around 12 and he was 13, but I remember that my parents got it, obviously, because we couldn't. We were on holiday down south and we had driven maybe around 3 hours to get there. At the time, I remember just having so much fun with my friend. It was clear to me that we were basically going to be sleeping in the same room, as this Airbnb only had two bedrooms. We both had two rather small single beds. While my parents got to sleep in the double king size bed, which was in the main bedroom of this like weird lodge place really. Eventually, the night rolls round. After a good day of exploring the local town and the amusements, we eat dinner and decide to go to bed at a reasonable time. We were tired from the whole day, so figured it would be good to get a proper night's sleep, as the next day we had a lot planned. About an hour passes and for some reason I just can't get to sleep. I don't know why, I don't know what it is, but my friend seems to be fast asleep, although I was most certain that he was, because at this point, he was snoring so loud. Thinking back on it, maybe that was the reason I couldn't get to sleep, I just didn't realise it. So there he was, snoring, and I was there laying on my back, just staring up at the ceiling. The ceiling was held up by like a structure of wooden planks. This was an old barn that had been converted into what looked like a lodge or somewhat of a house. It was kind of cool and it was surrounded by woodland and farmland. It was literally in the middle of nowhere. Where we lived used to be pretty urban so it was always pretty smelly, the air wasn't so good and I guess it was just so relaxing to be out there with nature. I was still laying there two hours later figuring out what on earth I could do to help myself get to sleep. I was a bit confused because I felt so tired, but at the same time something just felt off. It was like my body wasn't letting me recover or go to sleep at all, it was just keeping me awake. I was starting to get worried at this point because it was the summer, it gets light at around 4 or 5 in the morning. At this point I realised I was only going to get around an hour or two sleep before it was immediately light again, and the way the barn works is you pretty much hear everything outside so all the tweeting birds and the animals were bound to wake me up, as I was such a light sleeper. Eventually, the weird feeling starts to get worse. I start to feel more and more confused within myself, almost like someone is in the building that shouldn't be there. I know, 
It sounds weird, but what happens next made sense. I decided to get up and use the toilet. As I'm on the way back from using the toilet, I notice that the security light is on outside. It keeps flashing on and off. I figured perhaps it was just a fox or something walking to and from across the yard. It was a huge yard, but the security light was where our cars were parked for understandable reasons. This actual lodge or barn was in the middle of nowhere. It was down a country lane and the nearest town was at least a good 25 minutes drive. For the UK that's very far, especially with how small the island really is. As I'm on the way back from the bathroom, I notice the light is still flashing on and off outside. I couldn't understand whether it was a fault or not because this was our first night there, so I hadn't really experienced it doing this before. I looked out to check if anyone was there because obviously it was one of those sensor lights that turns on and off when someone is there. It could have been a fox or it could have just been the sensor playing up. That's what I put it off to, even at my young age. There my friend was still snoring and at this point sounded like he was choking on his own tonsils as I was peeping out the curtains to see if I could see what was going on outside. As I look around I see nothing. The confusing part about all this was the fact that I had a feeling that I couldn't get to sleep and now the light was coming on and off outside. It was like these two things went together perfectly and although I tried everything to ignore these things and go back to bed, as I lay there the light continued to go on and off. You see it went on and off in a way that wouldn't describe it malfunctioning. If the light was malfunctioning it would go on and off repeatedly, almost in a rhythm. This light was going on and off randomly, completely, as if someone really was walking past it. Eventually, I felt myself beginning to doze off, and it was at this exact moment that I start hearing talking outside. Now, as I said before, this barn conversion is extremely thin. It's made of literal wood that is maybe no more than around 5 inches thick and it had gaps in certain areas, so it was literally like proper naturey outdoor stuff. Eventually, I wake up immediately. I was in a state of drowsiness as I soon start hearing voices outside. It sounded like two middle-aged male voices, English accents and they were right up against the window where we were sleeping. I was panicking at this point and immediately woke my friend up who began stop snoring immediately. We look outside and the light's still flashing on and off. I tell my friend that I could hear people talking and the sensor light is going on and off like crazy. As I look, there's nobody. I run to my parents room and tell them what happened. My dad wakes up and takes a look outside the window as well. At this point the light is still playing up just how it has been the whole night. Except there's no one there. I told my dad that I definitely heard someone and could hear people speaking right by the window. I couldn't remember what they were saying but it was so vivid to me. To this day we never found anyone walking about that property even after my dad went out with the flashlight to search the whole area. He thought maybe someone was trying to take the car or possibly there was someone in the house next to us. It's hard to explain but there was like a horse training center or an equestrian stable next to the barn conversion. It was owned by the same people so we figured why on earth would the Airbnb host troll us or come and try and stand by the barn at 3 in the morning talking. All I can put it down to this day is that I was vividly dreaming and somehow associated my fear with being in this barn and the light to dreaming about voices that weren't actually there. It's kind of weird. It's like if you ever have those dreams where you dream that you wake up but then you wake up again. They have to be very strong dreams and they're quite rare, but it's almost like lucid dreaming but a bad way. The next morning rolls around and I've had little to no sleep whatsoever. My parents were also really annoyed and groggy because they were woken up in the night and my dad had to walk around with the torch looking to see if there was intruders in the middle of our Airbnb. After all this we had a week to still stay there and this was only the first night. I figured that this wasn't going to work and I realised that something was seriously off about this place. Eventually we came down to the realisation that the sensor on the nightlight outside of this building was just broken. Every night it started, even once it got dark and it seemed to be on some kind of a timer. 
The timer still worked, but for some reason the actual light itself and the sensor was just broken altogether. After realising that, I relaxed a bit more, but for that whole week I never really got any proper sleep. As for the voices and people outside, I never heard any more noises or saw anyone else, and I think on the fourth night I managed to get my first proper night's sleep, without worrying or sitting there scared. I slept at the popular girl's house. She lived across the road from the school in grade 4. I remember dinner was good, we got to having ice cream after, and I loved staring at the fireplace they had. It was one of those traditional ones. It was cold and all the houses in our area were cheaply made. Having a fireplace was quite special, or so I thought, being at such a young age. There was a rumour at school that her older brother and sister had tried to kill a kid by pushing him into a pit at a house party. Who knows if there was any truth to that, but as a kid I'm sure that was in the back of my mind. So, eventually we go to sleep, and it's about 9.30 at night at this point. That was quite early for me at that age, since my family were more European, and went to bed much later. It took me some time to eventually fall asleep, and then eventually I was out. I woke up a few hours later at around midnight, sweating, with a warm pressure on my chest. I was freaked out. I couldn't see straight away what it was. Then all of a sudden I realised it was their cat, curled up under my chin and purring. It spooked me big time. I had my mum drop me back home in the middle of the night because of how bad this freaked me out. I just remember feeling so uncomfortable in their house. But as soon as I walked in the door at my home, my sisters were there making art in my mum's creative studio. It didn't matter to my mum that it was late and I was pretty happy to be back home. Note, we lived in a street away so it wasn't making the other mum drive me home a long distance during midnight, but oh boy, I know it was really just a cute little thing, but I woke up feeling exhausted, almost as if my body had overheated even though it was pretty cold outside, so I was a bit confused why their cat was somehow trying to make me a nest, even though it didn't even know me. I guess their cat was nice and kind to new guests that came round, sometimes a bit too kind. This wasn't my sleepover, but rather one I was attending. It was a classmate's birthday party, and she invited all the girls in the class, so there were maybe like 12 of us all together. There was this one girl, let's call her Meg. She was the class weird kid, she was just different. She had a hard time making friends, but in elementary school, that stuff's tough. She was picked on a lot. Anyways, the host's parents said that she had to invite all the girls in the class. You can't just exclude Meg because she's weird. Cue the night of the party and my mum's dropping me off. We see Meg being dropped off and she's just running up the sidewalk with excitement and a suitcase in tow. It was probably the only sleepover she'd ever been invited to. The suitcase was like 1960s played style. Normally, with sleepovers, you just bring a backpack, but this girl was ready to go on holiday. The sleepover was going fine and well. Everyone kind of knew she was only there because the host had invited her, but everyone was still nice and included her in games and whatnot. Then, we all get ready for bed and start talking and gossiping, so the standard girl sleepover kind of stuff. I'm not entirely sure what happened, but someone told her she was only there because the host didn't have a choice in inviting her. She immediately started crying. I just remember how heartbroken this poor girl sounded. Crying and heartbroken really aren't words that could describe how bad she was crying. I guess she was thinking that she probably had a friend for the first time ever, that she was now included in something, and the reality is, was just a pity invite. It was like an emotional breakdown, where she went on about how she's never invited or included in anything. I remember sitting there in my sleeping bag, just feeling so awkward about the entire situation. Other girls consoled her and reassured her that she's okay. 
She did eventually calm down and the conversation tipped back to standard sleepover tour. After the sleepover, people that were there did try to make an effort to include her more at school stuff. They let her sit with them at lunch and they were nicer to her in general. But I just could never shake that feeling that I felt while at the sleepover. Something she was so excited about but probably ended up being so damaged because of it. I'm not sure if she was ever invited to another one again, and I'm sure that stuff hurts to this day. She did eventually find her niche of people when we got to middle school, and there were more students there. She was always really nice, but just different. I hope she's okay now and doing well.